Good morning. I'm so glad you are watching this video today. Feeling a little extra today, so I added a smiley face. Um, we're going to start just like we did yesterday. I'm going to give you all the answers um, to day two's problems. Um, you can check your work. And um, again, if, you're, if you notice that you're getting a lot of them wrong, that's okay. Um, just let your math teacher know. And we're going to move on here with the answers for uh, day two where we were adding decimals. All right, here are the answers um, from day two. Um, go ahead and check them. If you missed them, just go back and check your work. Um, there's also a very real possibility that I may have made a mistake. Um, if you think that is the case, then um, I apologize. And um, when we get back to school, I would like for you to prove that my answer is incorrect. Um, so there are your answers. You're probably going to need to pause because I am going to move on to today's lesson. All right, here we are, uh, day three. Uh, we're going to continue with decimals. Um, we're going to do a little bit of multiplying with decimals this morning. Um, I am going to go ahead and do the first six as our guided practice, and then you will finish the rest of these for independent practice. Number one, we are multiplying five tenths times three. The nice thing about multiplying decimals is that you don't have to line up the decimal like you like we had to do with adding decimals. So I like to set my multiplication problems up this way. I'm going to do 3 times 5, which is 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 more is 1. Now I look back at my decimal point. I count up the spaces, the digits behind the decimal points. In this case, there's only one. There's one digit. So in my answer, I'm going to put one digit behind the decimal point, and that is going to be 1 and 5 tenths. Um, number 2, I've got 5 tenths times 3 tenths. Again, I'm going to stack them up. Um, 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to carry the 1. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 more is going to be 1. Um, I could go ahead and multiply by 0, do 0 times 5, and then 0 times 1, but... I know my num my both of my numbers are going to be zero, so I'm not going to do that extra step. Uh, the last thing I do need to do, though, is count up the number of digits behind the decimal point. So there's one here, and there's one here. So I need to make sure there are two digits behind my decimal point in my answer. So for this problem, um, I'm going to need to move it, or I need to have two digits behind the decimal. So my answer here is 15 hundredths. All right. I noticed there is a pattern here. We've got a 5 and a 3 again. Um, now we've got 5 tenths times 3 hundredths. Um, ah. You can stack these up however you want. You could put zero and three hundredths that way if you like. Um, that just looks weird to me. So I'm going to actually put it on top. That's the nice thing about multiplication is that I can, I can multiply in any order. Again, I know five times three is 15 because I've done five times three for the first two problems on this paper. All my other digits are zero, so I, I'm not going to write those answers down. Um, I am going to count up the number of digits behind the decimal points. And so there are one, two behind this decimal point, and there is one behind this decimal point. So that's going to be three digits that I'm going to need behind the decimal point in my product. So in that empty space, you probably already have it figured out, I am going to put a zero in there. So my answer is 15 thousandths. Okay. So you can see 4, 5, 6. I need to know what 6 times 2 is. 6 times 2 is 12. Um, I am still 
My math students know that I like them to show work on every problem. Six times two, we already talked about, is 12. There is only one digit behind the decimal point. So I'm going to put one digit behind the decimal point. So I've got one and two tenths. Moving on here to number five. Yes, you have to show your work. Yes, I need you to write it out. I know six times two is 12. And so I need to count up the number of digits behind the decimal point. And there are two. One, two. There's my decimal point. Answer is 12 hundredths. All right, last problem I'm going to do here for in, for guided practice, again, is 6 and 2. So we've got 6 hundredths times 2 tenths. Remember, with multiplying decimals, um, that decimal does not have to be lined up. You can just stack them right up on top of each other, the numbers. Uh, 2 times 6 we know is 12. There are 1, 2, 3 digits behind the decimal point. 1, 2, 3 digits behind the decimal point in my product. My answer here is 12 thousandths. All right, so if you will go ahead and finish the rest of this page for independent practice. Um, just again, just try your best. Try every problem. And um, tomorrow when you check your work, if you find that you're missing a lot of them, talk to your math teacher, send a message, or when we come back to school, just mention that you had some trouble with the multiplying decimals. Um, thanks, guys, and you can come back tomorrow for a lesson on adding fractions with unlike denominators. It should be totally awesome.